This is part of our video series on human-centered evaluations for NLP explanations. Check out the link for more resources. You're currently here. Great to see you again. I'm Chen Hao Tan from the University of Chicago. I'm going to summarize our tutorial and present some future directions. From Professor Ron Brozo's presentation of the Psychological Foundation of Explanations, we have learned that about the basic properties of human explanations. First, human explanations are heterogeneous. There are many different ways to answer the why question. Connecting these uh, properties with Shi Feng and Jordan Burger's discussion of current machine explanations, there are also many types of machine explanations. This diversity inspires a lot of recent exciting work on this topic in our community and also highlights challenges in synthesizing these studies. Another important property is that human explanations are selective and usually identify a difference maker. In a way, this is also true for machine explanations. We need machine explanations because it's impossible for humans to make sense of a model of a billion parameters directly, and approximations are necessary. Machine explanations also aim to identify difference makers, but they do not necessarily share the same criteria as humans when they provide explanations. One clear example is when we take the functional view of explanations. A critical function of explanations to support generalization. So human explanations often identify a cause, and importantly, provide a causal mechanism underlying the difference maker. However, current machine explanations tend to focus on the model itself, especially the local decision boundary. So they do not focus on providing such causal mechanisms, whether in input attribution or in counterfactual explanations. More generally, the functional approach of thinking about explanations focuses on the role that explanation plays in learning and reasoning. This aligns nicely with what we generate explanations for in the context of machine learning. We want explanations to help humans achieve good outcomes such as better decision making or improving a model. Therefore, Vera Liao and Alison Smith Renner provide an overview of application grounded evaluations. Where we situate explanations in concrete use cases where people seek explanations. In these evaluations, it's critical to articulate your research questions and hypotheses. We need to answer questions such as what people seek explanations for, how explanations affect their goals, and why explanations help can help them achieve good outcomes. We also uh, dive into defining evaluation constructs which directly connect with the functional approach of thinking about explanations. The most important tips for researchers who plan to run application grounded evaluations with human subjects are first, always measure use case specific outcomes such as human AI decision making performance or human reliance on machine predictions. Second, it's often helpful to measure model understanding. Example measurements can ask users to simulate machine predictions on unseen instances or report their subjective understanding. Last but not least, it's useful to consider other effects explanations may have for users. For example, the time spent on a task and the cognitive load involved in making sense of explanations. Moving on to the second type of evaluation, Samuel Carden helped us review proxy evaluations with human explanations. Again, informed by the psychological foundation of explanations, we know that human explanations are heterogeneous and selective. Therefore, it is important to pay attention to design considerations. For example, small changes in the instructions can lead to explanations of very different properties. Another important co corollary is that human explanations are typically underspecified. There is often information that the audience is expected to fill in. As a result, it's questionable whether human explanations should be treated as ground truth. The area of evaluating explanations is still nascent. Here are some future directions that I'm personally very excited about. The first direction is to collectively build towards the rigorous science of explanations, which resonates with the inferential work by Dosh Velas and Kim. I would like to highlight two important steps. First, it will be very useful to develop a taxonomy 
of use cases with an emphasis on what factors drive generalization and robustness of experimental results. For example, there's a study on deception detection generalized to legal document entitlement and why. Second, following our discussion on evaluation constraints, there may be competitions between different functional goals of explanations. Recognizing and understanding such competitions is an important next step. It's unlikely that a method of generating explanations will dominate in all possible goals of using explanations. Therefore, it's important to un understand the potential trade-offs between different goals of explanations. The second future direction is to develop novel ways of using human explanations. Human-provided explanations can enable benchmark-style studies that are complementary to application-grounded evaluations with human subjects. However, as we discussed, using human-provided explanations directly as ground truth labels may not be ideal. It's likely more fruitful for the community to embrace properties of human explanations and develop novel ways of using them. One idea Sam Curran put forward is to compare the sufficiency of model explanations with that of human explanations. Finally, I would like to move from human-centered evaluation of explanations to human-centered generation of explanations. Human-centered evaluation is a starting point to identify gaps, including well in evaluation method for the short and what are the unanticipated consequences to serve human needs. By understanding these gaps, we can close them to develop more human-centered explanations. This process should be iterative. If we agree that explanations are ultimately used for humans, then the current explanation dominant approach of focusing exclusively on the model is far from ideal. We can take insights from this tutorial and at least follow three possible directions. First, we can incorporate the functional goal of explanations. Model debugging may require different explanations from supporting decision making. Second, we need to explicitly support generalization. An important missing component is to provide causal mechanisms beyond simply highlighting some words. Finally, we need to account for task-specific human intuitions. Knowing what humans already know about tasks can inform what explanations are most useful in complementing their prior knowledge. In the end, I would like to give you a big thank you for watching this tutorial. We are looking forward to seeing you in Seattle and have more in-person discussions in human-centered evaluation of explanations.